Hello everyone, my name is Melissa Murdoch and welcome to the Roundhouse In Conversation. And today we're joined by our Head of Music, Lucy Wood, and Head of Technical and Production, Ruth Butler. We're here today as part of this year's Independent Venues Week celebration. This year has been a year like no other for venues and the whole industry. So we'll, we'll be talking to them about the impact on the Roundhouse and the sector and what change we hope to see post pandemic. As I've said, my name is Melissa Murdoch and I'm a senior program manager here at the Roundhouse and I run our programs for entrepreneurs and freelancers. I'm a white female with big curly ginger hair, glasses and I'm wearing a black polo. So welcome Lucy and Ruth. Thank you. Hi. So let's start with some introductions about yourself and your role here at the Roundhouse. Lucy, if you'd like to go first. Um, so yeah, my name's Lucy Wood. I'm head of music at the Roundhouse. That means I look after our, um, all of our music related programs for young people, um, all of our gigs during the year and our festivals like In The Round and Rising. Amazing. Oh, and I'm a white female with glasses, brown hair, and a yellow polo, it's clearly polo day. It's polo day. <laughs> Over to you, Ruth. Oh. <laughs> We're all poloing, aren't we? Yes. Um, I'm Ruth. I'm head of technical and production at the Rent House. I have worked at the organisation since 2015, so I'm feeling a little bit aged now. Um, but uh, I, uh, my team deals with the delivery of pretty much everything. So uh, not so much the YP stuff, but certainly all the music events, performing arts, circus, oh, all of that, everything that comes through the doors, we deal with. Um, for accessibility purposes, I'm in a black polo, because that's the uh, order of the day, uh, and uh, white female, uh, and I've got yellow in Very nice earrings. <laughs> Both of you fantastic for Independent Venue Week, that's why we're here. So let's start there. What do independent venues mean to either of you? Ruth, over to you first. Uh, I think it is uh, an opportunity to be uh, a part of a collective experience, something that feels like a really lovely thing to do. So uh, venues uh, provide an opportunity to go and see bands play, maybe for the first time, maybe you're watching them learn their stagecraft in front of your very eyes, and they could be on their way up or could be on their way back down again, uh, but it is your opportunity to get up close and personal, I think. Um, but venues are also kind of community hubs. They're, they're woven into the fabric of that community, aren't they? So, so our Roundhouse Studios are a perfect example of that. We uh, offer so much to those young people, so many opportunities, but they are the people that will be filling the lineups of those independent venues at some point near you. So it's absolutely vital. Mm, amazing. I like this idea of the, the feeling of it. And yeah. there's so many memories that come with it as well, isn't it? It's, people are so emotionally connected. Um, I know when I tell people I work at the Roundhouse, everyone wants to tell me the, the gig that they've seen there and they share that experience. Yeah. Um, what do they mean to you, Lucy? I guess maybe that sort of independence of spirit and um, independence of operation. So there's a kind of more, maybe like, indie in terms of a kind of aesthetic and that um broader more kind of diverse ecosystem that that comes with being independent and the kind of um whole variety of different things that that supports amazing and let's let's get nostalgic for a minute let's go back way back when to what what triggered you to want to work in the industry was there a live music moment um lucy over to you it was really i've been thinking a lot about this and I don't know if there's like one particular moment. It was maybe just, I grew up in Brighton. I went to see a lot of gigs as a teenager. And, but there's an important coda to that. I looked really, really young for my age and I couldn't get into any of the shows that I wanted to get into. And I would have to go and I'd go and get bands autographs before the show, knowing I wouldn't be able to go to the show afterwards. It was really pathetic. And I would see sort of activity around a stage door or, you know, I felt like there was this thing that I wasn't able to be part of. And then sort of as I gradually started being able to be going to shows and, you know, went to shows that like were for 16 plus or whatever, I've really sort of, I guess maybe there was some sort of pent up 
like love for this thing I was finally part of it and maybe that kind of added to it I don't know um but uh possibly also maybe something about <laughs> because I'm also really sure I've always found it really hard to find spaces in venues where I can see so I always saw people standing on the side of the stage and thought I, I need to be able to get up there I need to be there <laughs> to be able to see the band it was but an it aspiration I mean, to just be closer to the action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really quite pathetic reasons, but uh, yeah. Physically closer. Physically, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just physically close so I can see their feet and their knees. That's important. How about you, Vu? Oh, uh, yeah, a bit the same as Lucy, really. I'm not sure I could put it on to a specific moment, but um, I, I've had a strange kind of route to this point, I think. I, I dabbled in biochemistry and then went, no. And and then went uh, went to drama school and trained in theatre. And uh, but even that, I was like, this isn't really for me. I'm much closer than biochemistry, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm still not quite there. And so and while I was there, I started looking at kind of arts festivals, and then that turned into music festivals. And then I found I was kind of there, and the thrill of it all was really. Um, suddenly tick the boxes and uh knowing that you've been part of that uh a very small part maybe but knowing that you've been part of that is is key i still get a buzz at the end of a gig at the round house when you stand on one of the bridges and you watch three thousand people pour out of those doors and it's not that they're going home and then we can go home it's not it's about the fact that uh that you witness this like collective moment that they've had and they're flying you know they've just had the best night and that you can't bottle you know it is just amazing you've actually just given me goosebumps Ruth. <laughs> that thought that I recommend feeling it. of yeah. being in that live venue and like both of you said there's they're, they're part of co your community and they're there's something to aspire to I can relate Lucy what you were saying in Oxford there was the Zodiac it was called that later became an O2 Academy and it was it was a place where once I was old enough I could I could aspire to so I can I can connect to that that feeling but venues have been closed um, and it's been sad and they've been hit so hard by the pandemic so what has that impact been on the Roundhouse? I mean, that is hard to quantify almost, isn't it? And I'm sure it's, well, I know it's the same for the industry up and down the country, across the world. Um, there was one week in March where we lost something like 112 gigs and events uh, just in five days in, in a working week. And I, uh, my desk is between the music team and the events team. And I was watching my colleagues, my friends, after phone call, after phone call, after phone call, clients and promoters, and then saying, sorry, we're out. And that was in a couple of days before. So we kind of it, we could feel it happening before lockdown proper, if you like. Um, and I'm not sure any one of us could have predicted that a year later, we're still postponing those same gigs for the third or fourth time, you know, and, and the, I mean, really, the venues are, are the tip of the iceberg, you know, when you start thinking about the layers to the to the industry that below us, you know, kind of the, the all of the freelancers, the supply chains, um, we are the fortunate ones. We have benefited from cultural recovery fund, for instance, that kind of thing. Um, but it is vital that we, as soon as we can, pass on that work to sound engineers, to lighting designers, to the promoters, to the tour bookers, that kind of thing. Um, but whilst the restrictions are in place, it's really tough. Um, we have managed to put a couple of gigs on, you know, we joined the streaming bandwagon like everyone did. It was the only option we could do really. So we did um, Leanne Le Havis's album launch. We did our poetry slam, which is a big event for the Roundhouse. Uh, and we did some campaign stuff, like we, we shot the We Make Events music video. Um, but I have to say, the, the brunt of the work has been responding to the ever-changing guidance, mm. um, particularly around social distancing. It has been nigh impossible to, uh, to get the figures to the point that it's worthwhile doing that gig. You know, the, the, the payoff between 
the capacity versus ticket price and and they're still wanting to honor that you know never wanting prices to be huge because we can only get 50 people in or whatever that number is is a real battle and a real struggle um, we are very fortunate that we have teams and teams of people at the rent house to be able to churn that work out mm. on account of the number of versions i've written of the risk assessment things like that it's not been fun um having said that there's been a real culture of sharing so abtt the association of british theatre technicians royal opera house they very early on started churning out some really great information about uh interpretation of guidance how best to um approach shows and productions and things like that with covid in mind um, and although that sounds quite theatre related actually independent venues it's all applicable so mm. it's a little dig around um and you can always yeah it's all applicable and you can you can find a way of doing it safely i think yeah so just hearing that the impact on the independent venue has that wide-reaching impact it has the impact on the freelancers it has the impact on the amount of people we connect with but how about the obviously the roundhouse has had to adapt but how about you in your individual professional roles during the in panda pandemic how you've had to adapt Lucy how's that been for you um, I, it's a bit strange for me because actually I started working at the roundhouse at the exact moment the lockdown began and in fact Ruth is one of my only colleagues I've met face to face without a mask on it, it's cool like that. Thing. <laughs> I know we've not met, I just realised. <laughs> it's terrible, there you go. So um, I had expected before I took this job that I would be going to shows night after night and I would be seeing promoters and agents and my industry colleagues face to face and my, um, you know, standing on that bridge as you describe and looking at, you know, crowds of people. Um, and uh, actually my job has been shifting dates around calendars for um, you know, working with my colleagues who do that and also thinking about how we can deliver a lot of our program online as we said in a couple of um, online shows we also rising festival which um, I was really looking forward to having you know being there in person for ended up being purely digital but that was sort of it was actually kind of turned out to be brilliant and um yeah, Stu, who programmed it, did an amazing job and did these Instagram TV shows for our resident artists and then ended up with probably, yeah, we can only fit 200 people into our studio theatre, which is where they would have probably performed otherwise. And we ended up having thousands of people watching their shows, which were really amazing. So as a sort of slight positive, um, that was quite an adaptation of what I expected to be doing. But um, there are some really nice little gems that have come out of that. Yeah, so there's been some positive, but it's been, yeah, huge shift in the role that you would have started in March. How about um, you, Ruth? Yeah, I think for me, the real challenge has been uh, I manage a team of people who are used to churning out hundreds of events a year, you know, events, gigs, literally anything. Um, and all of that just stops overnight. Bang. Um, and we aren't sitting behind laptop type people. We're not our <laughs> simple people. You know, we're not. Um, we are used to kind of troubleshooting, making stuff work, and something can come in in the morning by the evening, 3,000 people seeing it. And, and that kind of rhythm, but also that kind of high intensity for it all to just stop, that has been a real thing. So um, it's been a real change. Uh, and it can be super demoralizing when you uh, have probably you're probably on version 16 of a drawing and it's looking great and you've just got it to the point where you can probably make that trade off i was talking about earlier work so you've got just enough tickets and the producer going yeah okay you can we'll have to do something with this finally and that night you slip into a lockdown or you slip into and then boom and it, and it all just goes so um yeah mental health awareness and I don't know if there has ever been such a focus on this ever before but this has been absolutely key um mm. 
it's been really tough but all credit to my team they are heroes and they're still doing it there's a smile on their face and they're plodding on so thank you <laughs> thank you to the team i think you've both touched on that actually yeah the there's the professional um impact but the 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 mental health the emotional the personal impact you know we all love what we do we're so connected to the venues we work in and the work that we do and it's been tough and I think it's important to put a name to that and and look after the people around us and and there's a level of support there and and coming back to independent venues that we're talking about today um why is it so important that people support independent venues and and how can we do that Lucy? Um so independent venues are usually um a kind of very community uh focused space as we've said earlier um, and they offer other services for local people and the roundhouse in particular all the money that we make goes back to the work that we do supporting young people and the next generation of artists and people working in the industry um, sort of on or off stage so yeah I think independence generally and us in particular really benefit from that kind of support and we you know that good kind of emanates out more widely um, and also usually independent venues are quite often the sort of smaller spaces where musicians start out on their journey as we've said as well so it gets they get that opportunity to kind of um, uh, practice performing live to an audience and that's a kind of really critical stage in an artist's um, you know live live development and development as an artist so it's really yeah without that kind of I don't totally understand how you get from um, playing in your bedroom to you know headlining the o2 or whatever it is so it's yeah it's it's about those stepping stones that they provide and um i guess given all of that um when shows are allowed to happen again i think it's really important that people you know buy tickets through the venues box office if you can because that gives the, the venues valuable data that they can use to kind of um send you info on other shows that might be relevant to you and help kind of promote their work and um there are also kind of campaigns and things where people can donate, which I'd encourage everyone to do. Um, but yeah, get out there, buy tickets, turn up, drink beer, dance. Yes, you don't have to tell me, I'm ready, I'm raring to go. So I suppose everyone can keep getting nostalgic, keep, keep keeping an eye on the venues that you love um, and see what different competitions or things that they're doing to raise awareness um, for their venues. Um, now, Yes, we heard about how the music industry is adapting. And whilst we are in a moment of difficulty, I suppose now is the time for meaningful change. Um, so I was wondering what changes do you think are important for our industry? Over to you, Ruth. Well, how can you not talk about digital broadcast and streaming right now? I mean, we it has been a lifeline, hasn't it, for our industry? Um, and uh, we've got a team in house, so we're very fortunate to have been able to furnish those gigs. Um, but uh, it's, I think it's here to stay. I don't see how it can go anywhere now. You know, we are all desperate to be back in a room, rubbing shoulders with sweaty strangers. But I think that now we will be looking at gigs, you know, hundreds of miles away and going, can I still see it? Is it being streamed? Can I catch it somehow? Mm. I think we'd be daft to ignore that really um it's a thing isn't it if venues aren't already doing it i urge you to bolster your internet connections continue looking at streaming platforms you know that kind of thing um, it's not too late to start and i think it's um i think it's here to stay i don't think it's going anywhere mm, especially seeing as everyone's put so much time and effort over the last year into making it work it's yeah I and as you said, it's an amazing way to reach more audiences and um, see more amazing music. Um, how about you, Lucy? Where do you think change is coming and here to stay? Well, um, our lineups, um, you know, not just at the Roundhouse, across the board, I think have been not very diverse. And so I think um, we are making an effort. We need to work harder to attract um, uh, promoters who are uh, black people of color and uh, women to come and put shows on at 
the roundhouse and support them to do that. And I think that's going to, yeah, I think that's going to be an enduring change that lasts. And I hope that um, it's not just something that happens here. I hope it you know, goes more broadly than just independent menus. Yeah, definitely. Time for more diversity and more digital. Amazing. So as we're coming to an end of our chat, um, let's end on a moment of hope. So once live performances are allowed again, the doors are back open. Who are the first artists you would love to see perform or what is the first you know, indie venue, apart from the Roundhouse, of course, um, that you're going to? How about you, Lucy? Um, I guess my, my dream, it's probably not gonna come true, but who knows, we can dream maybe, um, Dolly Parton, Iggy Pop, Double Bill, Union Chapel. Um, I've been getting very excited about both of them um, over lockdown. I've been listening to Iggy Pop's um, radio shows and it's like amazing, plays all sorts of awesome stuff and talks about it in that like laconic, cool way. And Dolly Parton is just, everything she does is like magical gold. I couldn't love her more. And I just, I did see her once at Glastonbury, but I would, I would quite like to see her in a tiny venue. That would be quite magical. That would be amazing. Incredible. Fingers crossed. Yeah. How about then, you, Ruth? I want to go out with a night out with Lucy, don't you? Mm, yeah, I'm there. <laughs> um, well, I've got two young kids, so it's a, like, a night out it just feels like, you know, COVID aside, feels like an absolute treat. Uh, but I want to go and see my friends' bands again. I want to go out as a gang. I want to go out as a... As a posse, um, so I would have to say, my mate Paul, he's in a punk band and he, his band is called Dinner With Damage and they are playing the Lexington at some point. Who knows when, at some point, there is a gig that's been permanently for so. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I want to go there. I want cheap beer and good music and great company and an Uber home with no mask on. That's what I want. Well, I think that's maybe a, a little bit too far in the future. I know. Yeah, well, we can dream, can't we? we it's can the full experience, right? We want to we want to get excited. We want to put our trainers on. But luckily, not. We want to get beer over our clothes. We want to we want to dance the night away. We want to have a kebab. We want to be back home. We want to have the, the buzz and talking about what we've just seen. It's the whole experience. Oh, well, I hope it's not too long until we can be back there. Um, but for now, thank you to both of you for joining me today to talk about Independent Venue Week. Thank, thank you. you.